Okay. Live from the Export Beer Garden Studios, this is the feature length agenda for the 18th of May. The Agenda, an alternative commentary collective podcast. You yeah, g'day there. Welcome to the full length agenda podcast. Myself, G Lane, Manai Stewart, and Matt Heath. Real pleasure to be here. I'm dressed up as Matt Heath, uh, which will yep. mean nothing to anyone listening to this, but uh, we're wearing the exact same blazer, the exact same hat, and I feel a lot of money flowing through our get ups today, Matt Heath. Shit, we look good. Yeah, we do. We look good. You guys want to get a room? We're looking powerful. Yeah, we'd like to get a room, actually. Yeah. Yeah. We'd, 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 like get a room and we'd, we'd like to get a room. We'd like you to come with us, and we'd like to record the conversations we have in that room. Okay, well, let's do it then. Let's get into the first agenda topic. Uh, Super Rugby um, are claiming that everyone <laughs> except Moana Pacifica has a chance of making the playoffs. Does that, is that a good thing, or is that a badly organised competition? I don't know. Like, eight teams do qualify. <laughs> Uh, out of the, how many, 12? Yeah, I think they mean mathematically. Mona Pacifica are on three. Whoever's <laughs> at the top, which I think is still the Chiefs, yeah. are on 46. Yeah. The Chiefs have secured a home yes. final, have they? So Chiefs, um, Crusaders, oh. Hurricanes and Brumbies are all mm. not guaranteed home, but they're guaranteed finalists. And then they reckon that everyone else, yep. everyone else in the competition is still uh, alive. I think that we should let the Brumbies win it. Uh, we should collude as uh, Kiwi Super Rugby teams and just throw it because I liken it to you know when you play your younger brother or your like cousin or something at PlayStation and you thrash them at Jonah Loma Rugby like seventeen times in a row and they just go oh look we don't I don't want to play anymore so you let them win one so that they keep wanting to play PlayStation to get you so so you've got someone to play against so we need to let oh, the Brumbies yeah. win That's so that point. Australia don't leave Super Rugby yeah Australia will just take their toys and go home yeah, yeah. because right now they must be looking at going. Is there, why don't we just play a domestic competition? Yeah. I think they are. I think they're looking at that because they just come over here, apart from the Queensland Reds who beat the Chiefs. Yeah, they beat the Chiefs. They come over here and they get their pants pulled down, their little koala bodies spanked. Yeah. Uh, How long are you going to keep doing that? They they want to make, this is what Australian rugby wants to be, like, you know, those sort of cane hat wearing, blazer wearing, posh school, um, hyphenated name situation. They don't like coming over here and being smashed by the Chiefs manor. (laughs) <laughs> that, that's not, it's not ringing they, cowbells in the stands. If they wanted that, they'd play league. <laughs> if they wanted that, they'd play league. Like you know, if they, you know, they, they, the rugby over there is about your school, and it's more punting. It's prestige. Their, their punting's in boats. It's yeah. you know, it's whether you say chance or chance. Yeah, one of them denotes like a higher level of society. I don't know which one it is. I think it's chance, <laughs> chance. over there. If you say chance, yeah, rugby league players say chance. So yeah, it'll be definitely. That one. And we need Australia more than they need us. If, that, if yeah. we've learned anything over the last few years, when yeah. we haven't been able to have them over here, like the, the money, the eyeballs, the sponsorship, all that stuff that comes in, we need them. Well, th- what we need, though, for it to work is we need Austra- New, Ze- New Zealand players playing in Australia. We need, we need our players. Yeah. We need a draft yeah. where the Reds can get hold of... Cam Roygaard. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like oh, totally. we, and and that's what we, we've talked about this before. They don't have a board. They don't have a board for Super Rugby, so they don't make decisions for Super Rugby. Yeah. But if they did, they would go, "Well, we need to get all the good players all around, or all around the competition." The idea that you can't do that. Imagine the Warriors were only allowed to have New Zealand players. Yeah, oh, it would be bizarre, wouldn't it? Uh, is there a salary cap in Super Rugby? I think there is, but I don't know what it is. It no, no one's got enough money to get close to it. And no one knows how... <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't really work like that because the New Zealand Rugby Union pays you for a contract with the All Blacks and Super Rugby. That's what I'm trying to get to. It's it's, like, so you, it's like a communist fucking situation where you end up working in the factory and then they send you off to the mines and then you're uh, working in, in Chernobyl. You know, you are where, where, you are where they say you go. Because, yeah, because the only way to even the competition out is a salary cap or a draft. Yeah. yeah. Really. And so... And, you got, and, you, and the problem with that is you'd ask, you know, where you're positioned... Because we've actually positioned our franchises not by population, like you take rugby league, quite a lot of Sydney teams yep. due to the population. Yep. You know, quite a few. Quite a few, quite a few Sydney teams. Yeah. Whereas our teams are positioned like geographically across the country. Yes, yeah. equal spread. Equal spread, aren't they? So and really, we should have four teams in Auckland. Yeah, by by four if, super in, rugby teams. If, if the Highlanders have a team, and yeah, and yeah, well, one in maybe Taranaki. There should be one in Tauranga. Like yeah. there should be the Tauranga. I don't know whatever they are. Tanifa. The Tauranga Tanifa. And like if it, if the if a franchise isn't working in an area, they just up sticks like they do yeah. with. with Tod- sporting franchise say the Tauranga Hur- Hurricanes or the <laughs> Tauranga Highlanders yeah that doesn't really make sense does it of a like Scottish <laughs> well, Scottish vibes you get the H- Hiwak, Hawak Highlanders yeah there we go yeah, that's yeah, right that's way better. <laughs> I mean there's no lakes in LA you know <laughs> yeah so, well the Dodgers are called the Dodgers because of dodging traffic in Brooklyn they were the Brooklyn Dodgers 
and then right. they and they upped sticks and went to to LA. Yeah. I think the Henderson Highlanders has got a, has the got Henderson, a ring to it. Hendy Highlanders. The Hendy Henderson Highlanders. Highlanders. God, that would be a loose home game, wouldn't it, out there at Henderson? <laughs> but the fact of the matter is it's majorly structural why it's not quite pinging as much as it should. And yeah. it's because teams should be competing against each other, not only in terms of the game, but in terms of, of you know, success, movement. you know, like their brand. You know, yeah. Manchester United doesn't work across the entirety of the premiership. They want to be a brand in their own right. Yeah. So and, and 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 also fight for players. It would make you give a shit a bit more about the Aussie teams if you knew one of your players that used to play for your club is playing for them. You know, yeah, if you saw yeah. Falau Fakatava turning out for the Brumbies, you'd be like, oh shit. Yeah, yeah Damien McKenzie's. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Suddenly playing for the Reds. That would be freaking interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm um, speaking of which, uh, another full weekend. Only three rounds to go of Super Rugby. So hang on a minute. They can't do that. That is, it just struck me how insane that was. Imagine if the IPL couldn't have any international players. Yeah. It would suck. It would just. Be I mean, we can have, but we can have international yeah, players. We like we can have international players, but yeah. New Zealanders can't play overseas. Can't play overseas. And, yeah. and, play, for the and play for the All Blacks. Yeah, yeah. That's weird. Anyway, so this this weekend, Friday night, Moana Pacifica versus the Crusaders at um, Mount Smart. Um, your beloved Highlanders, Matt Heath, they have struggled to make the final. <sighs> they're they're, they're going to win it. They're going to win the whole thing. They're going to they're going to get through. They're playing the Melbourne Shambles. Yeah, they're playing the Melbourne Shambles at 4.30 down in, uh, in uh, the Sistema Lunchbox. And the big derby, it's the Chiefs versus the Hurricanes. Uh, Is there an easier tournament to get into the playoffs in the world? Uh, yeah, the, the women's version of Super Rugby. Right, okay. Everyone gets through. Everyone got through, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> hey, um, speaking of, speaking of, um, of drafts, um, this leads us on to the next topic. Uh, the NBA um, draft lottery. Mm. I didn't even know this was a thing until it was on TV. That because I've seen the draft. Yeah, I've seen the draft. How that works, and you know the teams are drafted, and all the players are celebrating to just become multi millionaires. Yeah, but I didn't know there was a, a prelude to that called the draft lottery. Yeah, where you find out who gets the first picks out of the, the shittiest teams. Yeah, and I think the reason why you hadn't noticed it is because. Um, since LeBron James, there hasn't been such a prohibitive number one pick, so no one really gives a shit what order yeah, that right. all comes out in because it's very subjective who you're going to pick. But this year, have you seen this bloke, Matt Victor Wembanyama? No, he is a seven foot five Frenchman. That's like because that doorway, yeah, <laughs> like that, the height of that doorway. Like if you created it, if you had to create a guy on PlayStation, this is what he would look like. He looks like an alien out on the court. He looks like genuinely created in a video game. He's fluid. He doesn't yeah, he's look. He's got gumby. some moves. He's, he doesn't look like a Gumby. Yeah. Nah, he'll shoot like step back threes. He's like crossing people up, going between the legs. All at seven foot five. So he's the most prohibitive like number one draft pick that, <laughs> that we've ever had. And so that's why the the lottery yesterday was such a massive thing because it was like who's going to get him? Because whoever gets number one is going to take him. I still thought it was a little bit presumptive that they were interviewing him because San Antonio got the first pick. And then they go over straight away and interview Victor Wembanyama. How stoked are you that San Antonio got the first pick? Well, what if he doesn't? You know, it's not a it's not a foregone conclusion that he's <laughs> going to be picked number one. What if they zag? He yeah, and I I quite enjoyed the lottery because you could just see people's hopes and dreams being crushed because yeah. they had representatives from each team. Yeah, yeah. and they're like sitting there and they're like, and the number ten pick is da da, and they're like, don't show any emotion. The guy's like, <laughs> fuck. But then yeah. when it got and everyone was pissed off except the San Antonio guy, he oh, got yeah. off his seat and they said San Antonio's here. He goes. They <laughs> <laughs> just absolutely went for it. So how does it work in the NBA? Because in the NFL, you can get first picks around if your team's going really badly to try and even yeah. up the competition. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's how it works. So in the NBA, it's, it's reverse order of the standings, and yep. that gives you a percentage chance of uh, getting the first ball. So there was a, uh, the uh, Pistons, yep. who had just as much of a chance as two of the other teams at getting it. They actually slipped back to five. Yep. And the guy, that, the guy that was their representative was Ben Wallace, who, if you can't remember, he was one of the Malice in the Palace guys. It was wow. him and Ron Artest that were up in the stands going for it. So there was a real tense moment where it was just like, <laughs> number five pick's going to be the Pistons. And he's just sitting there and everyone's like, fuck, is he about to run up into the stands? Start throwing start hands? Throwing <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then they promptly cut to an air break and then came back with the final And ball. in the NBA, because I follow the NFL closer than mm. the NBA, is this, and can you trade your first round picks? Yes, you can, yep. Yeah, because so, the, the Rams traded all their first round picks. And went in all all in on the Super Bowl, and then they won it, and then they the next season they they, got they, no they, one. they crapped the bed, and and they've got no way to go forward except for just mortgaging the future. The, the future, yeah, yeah. Um, the Oklahoma City Thunder have done the reverse of that, so yeah. they traded everyone away, Stephen Adams among them. 
um, and they now have, I think they've got like five picks in this draft. Like, how are they going to find enough roster spots for all these blokes to come into their team? It's out of control. Um, but that's, yes. a, that's a part of the game that's so freaking good and exciting yeah. and, and interesting and adds an element and, you know, like, you, you, you know, your team gets someone and it's suddenly exciting. Like, oh, my God, look at this. Look, look who we've got. Yeah, yeah. imagine if the next John Lomu was coming through the NPC <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. and, we had a, and we had a draft lottery and it's like between the Highlanders and the Hurricanes, who's going to get that pick? Yeah, I... I, I just I think I've, I'm only just scratching the surface of yeah. the whole American draft professional the sports bo- yeah yeah and I I, oh, like I I think it's great I love it I yeah, love but, how but if it's so much drama. Tamati Williams was coming through like yeah, yeah. Tamati Williams was up and you're like you got a 140 keg <laughs> just monster yeah like how excited would that be like look at you know you yeah. move. and he's coming to your team you're like yes. yeah yeah or well, yeah and then like the positional issues like what if you're like the Blues and you've already got like two full all black front rows. So like, yeah. do you draft that guy? If you draft that, does it nepo la la la? Now is he just like what? Yeah. So am I getting resigned? And then you the Highlanders and you get another world class uh, halfback. Half so yeah. <laughs> just throw them on the pile. Yeah, <laughs> um, uh, it needs yeah. to happen. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Right now, uh, segueing into the cricky uh, IPL. Like I'm not watching a lot of IPL. I know you only watch the IPL for Devon Conway, Devon Three Way. Um, Matt Heath, yeah. you've got a massive wide on. He Jesus, is coming so third overall in the run scoring, potentially the biggest bargain ever purchased. Was he 300 in, or 200? I think he was 200. Yeah, I, I, he was. He, just, he went for less than Mitchell Satner. Mitch, Mitchell Satner was 350, and I think Devin yeah. Conway's 200. Hey, they just passed like a what they pay a net bowler, which is about 150. <laughs> uh, and that was that was Fleming, eh? Fleming. Yeah. Fleming was like, Why you guys are one, muppets. Yeah, totally. <laughs> we're, we're going to get this guy for, for yeah. Stephen Fleming, wily character, good looking too. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, another cricket news: Joffre Archer's out for the Ashes. Oh, has, I, has he been more injured than playing? This, Joffre Archer. This is what I was going to say. I can't remember the last time I saw him play. Well, it was probably in New Zealand when he injured himself in New Zealand. Maybe a member of that controversy yeah. when one of an English fan may have racially abused him in Tauranga. Oh yeah, wasn't that like three years ago? Yeah, now? That was the last time I saw him. Feels like play. it. The BBC comment. Yeah. Yep, the BBC. British um, Broadcasting Corporation. Yeah. yeah. And, and just, but like, hang on a minute. Their attack's still pretty good, though, isn't it? Handy. Oh, yeah. Handy. Very handy. I mean, and at home. That Ashes yeah. series is going to be a cracker. And I've yeah, because you'd be, you, you'd be wanting your, 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 your swingers, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah, you've got your Andersons. You've got your, you've Anderson, got your, you've got your Broads. Uh, you're still you've going. that Mark Wood. He's yeah. a side bit of a psycho. You woke Stokes, Jimmy, Stokes folks. You woke Stokes, yeah, you woke Stokes. Stokes. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy Anderson's 58. And <laughs> better, better than ever. Still crushing darts. He'll, he'll be and coming in. He'll be bowling at 90 kilometres an hour and still be getting into yeah. the team just because he puts it on the spot. Playing on the PGA <laughs> Champions Tour with Steve Alker and then on, on the weekends when he doesn't have a test match. <laughs> I think that it's going to be next man up, though. For I've been in I think I've said this before in podcasts, but... I've been in meetings with Brendan McCallum, and you come out of that and you feel like Joffrey Archer. Like, I feel like I could mark my run up out and just walk out onto the pitch at Lords and just bang it in there. Because yeah. It just makes you feel like, why can't you be like the greatest player in the world? Why couldn't you be the best at whatever it is that you're doing? What, 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 what situation was this? Was this a broadcasting situation yeah. or a sporting situation? It was a broadcast, but God, it felt and, like And then a you just came situation. out there and you. Broadcasted oh, the shit out boy, of it. Boy, boy, did I produce a drive show. <laughs> <laughs> you produced the shit out of beef. We're talking guests. We're talking segments. <laughs> audio clips. Going to air breaks on time. I'm answering phones. I'm getting client liners in there. I was I was on fire. You're sending you're, you're sending audio to clients. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was all of that. It was. Just, I'm getting. I'm making coffees. I'm baking. I'm bringing treats into the office. Yeah, it was tremendous. How was, long that last? I'm, I'm quitting and I'm going to the ACC. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. As soon as Baz left, I just lost all motivation. <laughs> yeah, and that's why I'm back here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you got no, put out to pasture at the ACC. And yeah, no, I was standing in a meeting and quote like Sun Tzu's Art of War. And granted, <laughs> that's, that book's about 24 pages long, so it's not that yeah. uh, impressive, but it, it, it does. It really jays you up. Hey, a uh, bit of a competition time. We've got the uh, top, up, top up. Now, um, if you're out there and you're living in a flat situation, Matt Heath and Manaya Stewart, mm-hmm. we've got a Top a lasagna topper deep freeze to give away, mm. like 120 litre deep freeze. <laughs> it's and, the one we've got in the office. Yeah, eh? yeah, and full. We're going to full it to the brim with lasagna toppers, plus give you a uh, a pie warmer as well oh, yeah. for your flat. Can and, we can we stop whoever gets it? Like put in the contract that they're not allowed to turn it into an ice bath. No, they can't be involved in no. an art green no. sitting in ice bath situation no. No, that it, people are doing with deep freezers. And it can't stock anything, <laughs> any vegetarian items no. whatsoever. It just has to have just frozen items from Lita only. <laughs> yeah. We talked about this, how 
if you had a little bit, if you had one person in the flat who was just a little bit switched on and just before you went out on a big Saturday night. Oh, I put them in the put warm. them in the warmer. Oh, my God. oh hang on a minute, this is, but this is a deep freeze, is it? Yeah. No, and, because, the yeah and the warmer. Yeah, and the warmer. And the warmer. Yeah, it's full. Holy. It's, it, it's, the life, it's the life cycle. <laughs> like the warmer you see oh my gosh. at like uh, petrol stations or whatever, yeah. it, it can fit oh. like 50 toppers. Before oh you my go god! Out. You would you would hug and kiss oh your flatmate god. that put them in. You yeah. come in, you'll come in. It's like yeah. two thirty. You yeah. would have forgotten. For and you go. Oh! And the house. Oh! Oh! <laughs> and the house. The lasagna toppers. The house would smell. Oh my god! Beautiful yeah. like lasagna toppers. How's that for a pickup line out in town as oh. well? By the way, I've got a pie warmer full of toppers back at my place. <laughs> if you want to come and check it out. Yeah, I, you're in. You've pulled yeah. me. You've pulled me. So you just got to. Text topper. I was disgusted by you. I had absolutely no interest. I was about to, um, I was yeah. about to ask the security to make you leave, but let's go. So topper, that's two P's, T-O-P-P-A, plus your super rugby team, so who you're supporting there, yep. um, to 3236. So topper, uh, plus your super rugby team you're supporting uh, in your region. We've got five to give away. So we're going to give one away to each region. So Blues, Hurricanes, Chiefs, Highlanders, Crusaders. So... Um, d- Get onto that because, uh, and every text goes in the draw. Uh, you can also win some uh, leader topper vouchers as well. Oh, tremendous. <laughs> hey, have, you, have you made any leader housing yet? Like, oh, made that's a oh, pair of pants oh, out, of, out of the um, toppers? Well, leader housing. Well, I, I, what we should do, that's a great <laughs> idea, is uh, get the prints of just of just thousands of toppers, toppers. on a pair of leader housing. Leader housing. They call them leader housing. <laughs> yeah, leader housing. That's a great idea. Writing that's, this down. That's going on the ACC shop. Lo- leader housing. I assume you've done it. I just assumed no, it would be done. No, no. I've, I no. feel like I've seen you. Uh, You've definitely come at me covered in, 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 in toppers. toppers. <laughs> For sure. You've definitely come at me with your downstairs covered in topper. Maybe that's why I'm getting confused. Not in an official capacity, <laughs> no. though. I think was- hey, we've had a suggestion, that, um, speaking of drafts, obviously discussed drafts, around an ACC nicknames draft. Oh, yeah. Um, and like getting a, getting a draft up of all the ACC nicknames and then getting a, a picks from one to probably 20, just, I imagine. I'm loving you coming over to American Sport. Like, you've just l- looked... <laughs> You've just looked down your nose at me and Manoa for years for our love of American sport. Now you're, your problem is that if you go into American sport, there's just too much sport, isn't there? I know, I yeah. can't deal yeah. with it. Anyway. I'll, I'll be single. But anyway, it's things like, you know, you think of the, the best, the biggest nicknames that have popped off. You've got Ben from Accounts. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, hairy Jav. The Hairy Jav. You've got Steady the Ship. You've yeah. got Lovely Trenty. You've got Little Lamb Nisham. Sexy Camel. You've got the Sexy Camel. Uh, dog Roll. you got Dog, yeah, you got Dog Roll. you got The Mother. Yeah, like Tava. Severed piece. You've got severed, severed piece. piece. <laughs> so we're gonna. What we're gonna do is we're gonna collate all these and we're gonna put it out to the the public for a, a public draft to see where everyone sits in a, in the the nickname draft system and see who comes out as first pick. Yeah, I'm a big fan of this. Fuckamana yeah. Express for me was yeah. good. Oh yeah. yes, because there's not a play on his name. You know, yeah. there's just a bit going on, and then subsequently uh, the Fuckamana Mistress. Yes, for whoever his partner is. <laughs> who, at the time. who could ever forget the original Fuckamana Mistress? Oh, just dancing up on that balcony, oh. Lords. She was from America. She had no idea what she, she was watching. She thought when he met her, she thought he played croquet like the you know with the mallets. Because <laughs> he's a professional, a met a professional croquet player. She was great. She and then she the, turns up at these stadiums. And she was like, but she was, I remember seeing her on the balcony, just biffing like red or well, white wines. She had no idea what was going no, on. No, it was and a test match. And just, and she, I remember just, there was a bumping, pumping. Pump, oh, it was, it was great. It was, our wags, it was were, inspiration. Our wags were winning. It was inspiration. We, we did. won. We won. The we, wags won. Yeah, we did indeed. <laughs> um, just a bit of news from the golf. Um, the PGA Players Championship is mm-hmm. kicking off uh, probably just about. In a few hours from now, but uh, there's one Jeremy Wells mm. in the PGA Championship. He's qualified. A hey, Jeremy Wells, like a, a natural Jeremy Wells. I think he's a bit not s- not the pest that I do no, breakfast show with every morning. But not. he seems to be popping up everywhere. It's, something's going on. We we do live in a simulation. Mm, yeah. There's a fucking racehorse called yeah, yeah. Jeremy Wells. There's a trotter called Jeremy Wells. Yeah, I was wondering if this guy's been named after the horse. Yeah, and the, the full complete circle yeah. of <laughs> horse named after Jerry. This guy's named the after the circle horse. of Wells. Let's just say though that Wells is an outsider. He's paying a hundred and one uh, no, one thousand thousand dollars to, to win the PGA Championship. Um, so um, as a, just as a sign of support, if you place a bet on him, any bet, whether it's one dollar or a hundred dollars, uh, send us a pic of your betting slip just into our DMs or the ACC and Z, and uh, we'll. Could fire you a fifty dollars bonus bet to put on probably a player that might actually win. Mm. Yeah. Brian yeah. Fox is playing. Yeah, well he's 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 had a bit of bit of issues with he had pneumonia. Yeah, we got pneumonia at the Masters because he was like bugger it, I'm going to play. Remember they had all those storms, that tree oh, yeah, fell down. Tree. <laughs> oh, and that's he, right. And, 
and he got crook, and so then he had to miss the next one. But he now is going to play in this one, and if he, oh, I don't know, there's some convoluted thing where if he's the 150th best player on the third Sunday after the Harvest Moon, he gets to play more <laughs> more tournaments than if he's not or something. It's so golf to be like, I, I don't know how this works. Um, but he's looking pretty good, apparently. Why don't we celebrate the Harvest Moon here? Well, I don't know. What, what are we harvesting? We're not putting a lot of harvests down. Wow, well, um, there's people putting a few harvests down. <laughs> <laughs> what is, it? is it just a full moon, a harvest moon? What is that? It's is it? a, I don't know. I don't know, but it sounds like there's a great song about it. It, it appears in horror movies all the time, the Harvest Moon. Yeah. I'm, I'm into it. Let's Isn't do it. that what May Day is over in Europe? Oh, is it? Well, they all celebrate that. Or yeah. Is that midsummer? I thought May Day was Russian New Year. Isn't have the Harvest Moon our Matariki? Yeah, yeah, that's oh, a yeah. good point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's, it's Subaru it's, in Japanese. Um, harvest, Subaru. Uh, harvest, yeah. harvest stars. Mm. Okay, cool. There we go. Anyway, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Okay, any, uh, Manai Stewart, Matt Heath, anything give you a little bit of a wide on in the sporting week? It's uh, just gone. This week, the wire's getting up oh, yeah. um, over the that's Bulldogs. The, yes. The, the fashion that they wanted in, you know, I think they scored four tries and they were genuine tries. You know, they were kicks to the corner. They were Adam Fanua Blake smashing through the front door. Um, and I just think we're going to buy this week, which is great for the for morale. Yeah, and, and injuries, and injuries. Um, good news around Mitch Barnett. He went and saw a neck specialist, and they were like, "Yeah, I reckon you get another few years in you." So he might be back soon. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, not, it's not broken. It's, well, it is, but he's going to still play. And uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, for me, it's the wires getting up. Oh, nice. Yeah, so I've got another boring one. It was uh, two days ago. Dodgers walk walk off. So in the twelfth innings against the uh, Brewers, and uh, pitcher loads the bases. So you know we we can't break yeah. the we can't break the, the the tie situation. And then <laughs> their pitcher loads the bases, and uh, we get a walk walk off. So walk off is when you're the home team and you go ahead. So the game's over. Yeah. And you um, want to do it with a if you do it with a home run. There's yeah. grand slam walk offs is the yeah. greatest thing ever. Yeah. If you're like you're three behind and you home run. Grand Slam, you yep. go ahead and win. Game over. The the most embarrassing one is a walk walk off, where the pitcher walks you, but the bases are loaded because he's walked so many other people that he walks you home. Oh, well, so why would you walk someone in that situation? Well, not intentionally. He, oh, pit, right. he, he pitched it. He pitched oh. four four balls. <laughs> oh. Right. But what they did is they actually walked. Anyway, it's, it's going to get too boring. But they 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 walked Max Muncy because they were worried he was going to you know smashed out of the park. Oh, Max right. Muncy. So they put an well, they put they put one on the on the base. Just because, just because they were like, yeah. you know, let's walk them. Yeah, and, uh, and then they walked home, and it was just the celebrations were so good. Because yeah. how do you celebrate that? It's just such a piss wake into the game. <laughs> like <laughs> it's just it's a tap out almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. We've just walked them. Um, my white on was the Hurricanes Moana Pacifica game, purely because the power play we got on the TAB made that game so much more interesting. It ended up being an absolute hiding by the Hurricanes, <laughs> but we had money. We had a separate game going and a separate scoreboard running on um, Sky oh, Sport 9. We bet on uh, Geordie Barrett beating Moana Pacifica in points. <laughs> Single-handedly. <laughs> Single-handedly. And because the game was blowing out, it was pointless talking about the game. We just concentrate on, on Geordie v Moana Pacifica. Yeah. He missed three conversions <laughs> that were kickable, and he'd lost 22-21. <laughs> We were so gutted. The TAB is so good at these kind of power plays, man. They make some interesting stuff oh, in there, eh? That was, that was a great one because as the second half blew out, they had 60 points. Artie Savier scored three tries. It was, all, it was blowing out. Paul Moana Pacifica, they, didn't, they scored like three points in the second half. Mm. Um, but that just made a game of it, I think, and it made it interesting for myself and Matt Ward as we battled our way through uh, that commentary. So, well, that's yeah. interesting because, of course, on Friday, I think it's that you and me and I were doing yep. – um, Moana Pacifica versus the Crusaders. Yeah, we might have to make up a yeah. something in there. Yeah, yeah absolutely. That's we will. gonna. But they're resting. Crusaders are resting seven players. Yeah, I know. Seven oh. players. So that's seven players. Slap in the face. Yeah. Is that? But oh, I guess because the, the Chiefs, the Chiefs have already got the home final, yeah. and it's a rotation. This, yeah. Everyone's right. Even the even the Hur- Hurricanes v the Chiefs are resting Adi Savia and Jordy Barrett. So who's 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 playing at ten then for the Crusaders? Oh, oh, now you're asking yeah. the hard ones. Yeah, because if, 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 if it was the Moanga, fig. then that would be good to, for him to beat the. Oh, be yeah. another good yeah. scoreboard to run. Yeah, that would be. Yeah, I don't think we'd be paying much that one either. No. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so you got the three way going out this weekend: Moana Pacifica, Crusaders, 7 p.m. with you chaps on that one. Uh, Highlanders, Rebels, Four Thirds, and the Chiefs versus the Canes. Chiefs, Mana versus the Canes at the FML Stadium. All on. Um, 
Uh, Sky Sport nine and free on iHeart. Uh, the Chiefs of the are the shifts gonna the shifts man are gonna do a bunch of resting. No. Nah. They're not. They're nah, going all in. Nah, they did this last week. They did it last yeah, they, week. They did yeah. it all last week. That's yeah. what they got. They got redded. They yeah. got redded. They played all the. They played all the necky. I hard like course. that. They're trying to win the whole thing. They're not worried about a clean sheet. Yeah. yeah they're, they're going for the. Obviously, you have to. But yeah. But but that that shows they're all in. Yeah, they're all in against the yeah. Canes. But you know, the uh, the TAB good punt from the agenda this week. Uh, we're going to go the PGA Players Championship. He's on a hot streak. Uh, and yes. that's uh, John Ram. We're yeah. going to stick a hundred yet bonus bet on John Ram. That'll get us well and truly over the three grand mark, won't He's it? paying $9 at time of recording this. Um, he is the second favourite behind Scotty Scheffler and just ahead of Rory McIlroy, so I feel like that's a pretty powerful bet for us. Yeah, absolutely. So we're up to about uh, 2.8 yep. on the uh, on the ACC pot. Million. When it, when it gets the three, when it gets the three grand, we are divvying it up 30 ways and dishing out 100 bucks cash to 30 people, so yep. we'll let you know about that next week. Oh, um, oh, I will say this. Uh, Taylor Gooch is paying seventy-one dollars. That was the tasty option. Gooch, the gooch, the gooch The gooch, the gooch, the gooshka, the gooshka. Well, he might be worth a little lazy punt as well. Yeah, maybe we hedge it, put it oh, on yeah. the goosh. Okay, right out. It's time now for Topper Plays of the Week. Brought to you by Lida NZ's Lasagna Topper. All right, coming at number three, Leicester find me, find me an igloo, Leicester <laughs> find a nuku. His finish against the Blues, I think, has been underestimated. Um, that is loose. Havili, Enor, Enor over the 10 metre, Enor inside to Havili. Havili with the dummy in the fin, Havili up to find a nuku, find a nuku for Leicester. He'll score. What a finish from Leicester. Find me an igloo. <laughs> is, he going, is he going to the World Cup? He's going to France next year. He is. But he's still eligible for he's the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, you've got to get him. But I, think, I mean, I don't know. Like, are, they, are they going to be punitive? Yeah, this is the thing. I don't know. It's like, it'd it's be just like New Zealand rugby to say, you know what? You're not. Yeah, you're not. left us. But who so. cares about the future? I know. Yeah. Just win the World Cup. Like, we're, we're too future focused. We've already decided on the coach. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is the thing. Is, uh, he doesn't give a shit about the future, Fozzie. That, so he's going to take whoever. He, oh, he might true. take RTS. He might take Leicester. Yeah, yeah. That's um, that, yeah. The world ends after the World Cup anyway. So what does he care? He's going to hit the nukes like Putin. Was, no one was going, we're not taking Richie and Dan because they're not coming back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, but that finish, he basically did a handstand. In the corner. It was an NRL style try, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But it was the work from Haveli before that because he, he threw a like chest pass dummy that got Bowden Barrett off his feet, faked yeah. him out of his shoes. Then he fended someone, one handed spiral offload. It was sick. Yeah. Okay, number two uh, is Dan Corbett, weatherman, the weather girl from uh, not very sporting related. But, um, and watch that snow as well going into early Thursday. A colder undercut. undercut. Do you, know what, do you know what's interesting? Because my, my text machine lit up. I was doing something else. A bunch of friends said, did, did Dan Corbett just say undercut? And then I was like, I'll just check. And I went to social media and it was already up on the ACC. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Joe Jury, so quick. It, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it barely happened. It, it was still echoing around the studio when, when it was on the ACC socials. What would you do, though? Because I don't think I'd correct myself. No, you don't I'd, correct yourself. Yeah, yeah, because they have a listen. He, he makes it worse. And watch that snow as well going into early Thursday. A colder undercut. undercut. Yeah, don't, don't, because yeah. no one would notice. Yeah. It's like when Jerry said um, he was going to say country crunch. Cunt, cunt crunch. Oh, and saying. he said cunt crunch. Yeah. And then he stopped. And then that stopped. And, and, and that was the problem. And he hung it out. He hung it out. Yeah. And and um, I think Sam uh, Simon Dallas. So all most of the team have said cunt on on one yeah, years they have now. Yeah, right But Simon Dallas was talking about the credit crunch. Oh yeah. And, oh. and he said the credit cunt. Well, Mark. And Rick. then he stopped. And then it was the it was the two seconds afterwards when you deal with it. You gotta <laughs> you gotta go. The credit crunch. You, the credit cunt is causing problems. <laughs> yeah. It's like because people stop, don't realize they don't, don't realize it's the yeah. stop and the self hatred and the. Ramifications. I'll tell you who owned it, Mark Richardson, when yeah. he described Ration Vavringer um, as a young cunt. Yeah. And a couple of young cunts. He yeah, goes, just a couple of young cunts. Yeah. And he left it there. Yeah. It was and fine. Then, but, everyone else, but everyone else deserted him. Yeah. You could hear it, and then he, yeah. it was left up to him to go. Yeah, that was Sri like, Lanka, the, huh? that was like the, that's Venus Williams, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> from, Deb, it was, from Deb's. No, it was Serena from Hockley, yeah. Yeah, Hockley, yeah, sorry. Yeah. That, yeah. That was Serena, that's Serena Williams, Williams there. Oh, oh, that's Serena know, Williams. She goes, nice to see Serena Williams here from the Australian Open. And then oh. just... And, and the rest of the crew just tried to distance themselves. They abandoned yeah. ship. Yeah. They abandoned ship. They just get... 
We timed today. It was 30 seconds before anyone yeah, yeah. <laughs> said anything else because they wanted to distance themselves from Jeez, it so much. That, that got swept under the carpet, didn't it? Uh, what, did, what did that one get swept under? I don't know. Anyway, the uh, number one topper play of the week, and anyone who watched the end of the match against the, uh, the Crusaders match uh, against the Blues, you would have seen this poor bastard. Did you feel like the tech boys just couldn't get into your rhythm? Um, so in the background like here... I said, it was a night for defence and... In the background... They come hard at the, at the of breakdown. Dog rolls interview. Um, they're a good defensive this side. This whole time. Um, this whole time. That goes on for about another 30 seconds. Mm. There's this whole battler. He's got a... Standard. He's got a standard in the ground and he's trying to put the... Uh, the, the, the oh, like, tape. Def- the tape This is so it. good. And he's trying to... And he, he's trying to wind it around it and he lets it go and it disappears. That's he goes in and out and it disappears. He's having an absolute shocker. It it's just goes on for so long and it's really undermined the sort of rural uh, facade <laughs> of the Crusaders a little bit because they sort of pride themselves on being, you know, mainlanders on the end of the Canterbury Plains. And Well, well, me and G-Lane, we sort of think of ourselves as mainlanders and, oh, yeah. you know, like, you know, like not mainlanders, but, you know, rural, rurally onto it. Yeah. And when we were lining up for that plane the other day, Oh and one of those God. came off, and we were trying to fix it. <laughs> no, that was yeah, that was the the those the, pull and go yeah, things. The pull and goes. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was similar crowd situation. Barrier. Your crowd barrier at a it, lining up for a plane. Yeah, and one came off, and we were trying to fix it for so long, and eventually, G Lane just tied it around the yeah, thing. I, just, I yeah. couldn't get it back in couldn't the slot. Back, slot back so I, just, in I just pulled it further, died a big granny around the pole, and said, I yeah. it, and, and I was like, well, hang on, we're not going to give up like that. Like, we're not going to admit that we can't operate a simple clip that's obviously designed to be used without any kind of thought. So we came around the corner, and now we, there was a crowd, because it was actually a lot of people lining up for security, and everyone was looking at us and laughing at us because G-Lane had tied Tied the big bow. I was like, no, we're not going to be laughed at. We're going to be, we're going to prove that we know how to do it. And so I undid another one. <laughs> Just to show that G Lane was an idiot and that I knew how to put it back on. Uh, we couldn't get it I couldn't back on. Back on. Nothing more, I had to do the second <laughs> boat. <laughs> to tie it off again. There's nothing more emasculating. I remember putting up tapes like that at my in laws' place, and I, it took me so long to get across this paddock. Meanwhile, my missus walked along and did three in the time <laughs> it took me to do one and then had to help me finish mine off. I was like, oh, it's like the flicker on the when you're at the petrol station. You know, oh, like, like yeah. you're putting the gas in and you can just flick it back and then it runs itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, some of them you just go like that and then sometimes you're like, what? Yeah, what? you're, you're yeah. sitting there, play, you're fumbling around like you're, a 14-year-old flicking, boy. You're, you're like, flicking, hey, you're trying, you're trying flicking to the it. bean, the things. Yeah. <laughs> that thing's yeah. sputtering and sparting and gushing uh, all over the place. I can never trust the auto turn off as well. No. As soon yeah. as I hear that, it comes out like, quickly take it out because yeah. I don't want it gushing all over me. Yeah, yeah. which doesn't happen. But I, um, I love that in that interview, uh, I think it was whichever Barrett it was. It was dog roll. It was uh, a great... It was, was Bodie. Bodie. Oh. Uh, it was a great night. You for were so focused on the guy behind yeah, him, you didn't, you didn't even notice <laughs> which Barrett, Barrett it was. Yeah, it was Bodie. And um, he, he started off with, it's a great night for defence. And in the background, there's a guy just having a real meal of defence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's defence. Clean, clean oh, bar. Clean shit, bar. That's, that's good. good. That's, that's, good. Good. that's good. That's good. Shit, hey, that's good. Hey, just a, a one last thing before we go. If you want to join myself, Matt Heath, and Manaya Stewart in Paris. Why the hell uh, wouldn't you? We're in October <laughs> for a week on the uh, Export on the Ultra so- on Beer the, Garden on Tour. The ultra bar. Source? Yep. Yeah, on the Ultra Source Beer <laughs> yep. Garden Tour. Yep. Uh, all you have to do is text Paris to 3236, follow the link, and just register. Uh, there's only a couple of weeks left in that competition to join us. Uh, it's going to be a pretty epic week in Paris. I think there's something going on in France around that time, sporting September, October. There's something sporting going on. I don't know what it is, mm. I don't know what it is uh, but uh, we're headed over for it. So what the hell are we? A commentary team going to France right. around that time? Oh, no idea. <laughs> no idea. Yes. Yes. If you haven't seen that video, you've got to go onto that. Anyway, thanks for joining us. That's the agenda. That's the full length, feature length. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow with the uh, just the tip. Woo! You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast. For more episodes, subscribe on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.